In this video, we're going to learn how to find all the zeros of a polynomial function. So in the last lesson, we learned about the fundamental theorem of algebra to help us indicate how many zeros we need to look for. And now we're going to learn how to find all of them. And in this video, I'm going to show you how to use technology to assist you in finding all of them. So at first, it starts off with I want to find the zeros, so I'll start by actually graphing this to see where my zero, my real zeros might be. So I'm going to hit y equals, plug in x to the fourth, plus x to the third, minus 7x squared, minus 9x, minus 18. And I'll hit graph. And this is the cubic I get from this polynomial. Now I see here it crosses the x-axis at two spots. If I use the second trace, the calculate feature, use the zero feature of the calculator, which, which means I hit enter on zero, get a left bound, which means I go towards one of these two zeros. I'll go left of it, and then I'll go right of it very clearly to the right, hit enter, and hit enter one more time to guess, and it says one zero is at negative three. So I've already found one of them. Now I can also use the same feature on the other zero all the way to the right. And I thought it takes a little bit to scroll, but once you're there, it, the, 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 uh, the technique isn't too hard to use. But now here's the zero, left bound, hit left a few times from the zero, right bound, hit right a few times from the zero, hit enter, Enter again, and my other zero is at 3. So I know I have a 0 at negative 3 and at 3. So what I'm going to do to solve this is I'm going to factor out x plus 3 and x minus 3 from that polynomial to help me solve it. So I'm going to use synthetic. So first I'm going to use x, factor out x plus 3, which means I use negative 3. My coefficient's 1. 1, negative 7, negative 9, and negative 18. Carry the 1 down. Negative 3 times 1 is negative 3. 1 plus negative 3 is negative 2. Negative 3 times negative 2 is 6. Negative 7 um, plus 6 is negative 1. Negative 3 times 1 is positive 3. Negative 9 plus 3 is negative 6. And negative 3 times negative 6 is positive 18, which adds down to give 0. So that leaves me with the uh, polynomial x to the third minus 2x squared minus x minus 6, which I'm going to factor out x minus 3 from that polynomial. Let's continue factoring it out. So I'll use 3 for my x minus 3, and then 1 negative 2, negative 1, and negative 6. So carry that 1 down. 3 times 1 is 3. Negative 2 plus 3 is 1. 3 times 1 is 3. Negative 1 plus 3 is 2. And 3 times 2 is 6. And that gets me 0. I was definitely expecting these zeros because I had seen them as zeros on the graph. That leaves me with x squared plus x plus 2. So now I have, I can factor my function. f of x is now equal to x plus 3 times x minus 3 times x squared plus x plus 2. And if I'm looking for all the zeros, I just set this equal to 0. And then I'll continue to set each factor equal to 0. So x plus 3 equals 0, give me that solution of negative 3. x minus 3 equals 0, give me that solution, giving me that solution of 3. And these last two roots are probably imaginary, since I did not see them cross the x-axis. I can almost assume that they're going to be complex solutions. So for x squared plus x plus 2 equal to 0, I can use any technique I would like to to solve this. I'm going to use the quadratic formula. Which is negative b plus or minus the square root of 
b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. So x is equal to negative of 1, since b is equal to 1, plus or minus b squared, which will be 1 squared, which is 1, minus 4 times 1 times 2, which is 8, all over 2 times a, which is 1. So 2 times 1 is 2, giving me a negative 1 plus or minus the square root of negative 7, all over 2. So x is equal to negative 1 plus or minus i square roots of 7 over 2. So there's that complex conjugate pair. So my other answer would be negative 1 plus i square roots of 7 over 2, all over 2, and x is equal to negative 1 minus i square roots of 7 all over 2. So to, by the fundamental theorem of algebra, there are no other roots because I have four roots here, and there are only four roots in the polynomial according to its degree. Let's try this one more time so I can go through that process with you. So I'm first going to use a, do a bit of research by plotting this graph. So 2 x to the fourth minus 3x to the third minus x minus 6. I'm going to plot this in a standard window that's un unaltered. Now see here, I can see it crosses the x-axis twice. So I can use that zero feature, go left of it, and then go right of it, hit enter. 1, 0 is at negative 1. So I'm going to need to factor out uh, x plus 1. That's where, that, that's where that, factor, that 0 would come from. And the other 0 would be at 2. So factor out x plus 1 and x minus 2. So I'm going to use synthetic division again. So for x plus 1, I'll put negative 1 in this little box. Write my coefficients out. So 2, negative 3. There's no x squared term, so I'm going to put a 0 in its place. Negative 1, negative 6. Bring down the 2. Negative 1 times 2 is negative 2. Negative 3 plus negative 2 is negative 5. Negative 1 times 5 is positive 5. 0 plus 5 is 5. Negative 1 times 5 is negative 5. Negative 1 plus negative 5 is negative 6. Negative 1 times negative 6 is positive 6. The negative 6 plus 6 is 0. There's that remainder of 0. And when I factor out x plus 1 from 2x to the 4th minus 3x cubed minus x minus 6, I'm left with 2x to the 3rd minus 5x squared plus 5x minus 6 which I'm now going to factor x minus 2 out of that polynomial. So I'll put 2 in that box, and the coefficients I'll use are 2, negative 5, 5, and negative 6. Carry that first 2 down. 2 times 2 is 4. Negative 5 plus 4 is negative 1. 2 times negative 1 is negative 2. 5 plus negative 2 is positive 3. 2 times 3 is 6. The negative 6 plus 6 is 0. So that also is a factor, leaving me with 2x squared minus x plus 3. So now this polynomial can be factored into x plus 1 times x minus 2 times 2x squared minus x plus 3, which I can also set equal to 0 to find the zeros of the polynomial. And then I'll set every factor equal to 0. So x plus 1 equals 0, which solves for x equals negative 1. x minus 2 equals 0, which solves for x equals 2. And 2x squared minus x plus 3 equals 0, which I cannot, f which I might be able to factor um, if I can find two numbers that multiply to 6 and add to negative 1, which doesn't seem possible for two positive numbers or two negative numbers to do that, to get that negative 1. So I'm going to use the quadratic formula. So I'll get x is equal to, 
I'm going to write down what AB and C are on the side here. So negative of negative 1, which is just 1, plus or minus the square root of negative 1 squared, which is 1, minus 4 times 2 times 3, which is 24, all over 2 times A, which is 4. So X is equal to 1 plus or minus the square root of negative 23, all over 4, which gives me 1 plus or minus I square root of 23, all over 4. And another way you can represent that imaginary solution, if you want to have the real and imaginary part separate, the other two solutions here would be x is equal to 1 fourth plus the square root of 23 over 4i and x is equal to 1 fourth minus the square root of 23 over 4i. And that is how you find all the zeros of a polynomial function.